Namo Buddhai and welcome. In this video, I am sharing uh, my learnings from Middle Discourses 47. The title of the discourse is The Inquirer Vimam Sakka Sutta. That is the title of this discourse. Now, this discourse is about, about Buddha giving guidelines on how a person, how an inquirer, a mendicant who is new to the teachings of the Buddha, uh, how he should test the Buddha. Now, this is like, you know, a fundamental, you know, something very, very different in Buddha's teachings. Buddha was a teacher who did not even, like, Buddha was totally against blind faith, right? No blind faith and nothing on anyone. He laid down even like rules on how a, a new student who is coming, right? A new student who is coming, he is not, his mind is not well developed, that he could not comprehend Buddha's mind. Otherwise, you know, some people who have that strength, that psychic power can comprehend what is going on in the other's mind, right? So they can actually find out that what stage the teacher is. But a person who is not yet, con cannot comprehend. Buddha is even giving him the rules on how you should test me. Now, this is something which I have not found any other master, any other teacher doing this, right? So Buddha always said, don't even believe in what I teach. Don't even trust me. Test my test me, inquire. If you have doubt, doubts will come. Keep asking, keep testing. See what is your own experience. And this is like something which is very, very profound, very, very different. And it, you know, elevates Buddha's teaching to the ne next level, right? So, uh, so, 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 so how it goes is, and I'm just sharing the summary of this discourse. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can check that, read the whole discourse to get your own insights. So, Mendic Buddha says, mendicants, a mendicant who is an inquirer, unable to comprehend another's mind, unable to see what the uh, other person's mind uh, is uh, uh, there, should scrutinize the realized one to see whether he is fully awakened Buddha or not. Right? And this applies not only to Buddha, Buddha, but to any spiritual teacher. So if you go to refuge in a spiritual teacher, the spiritual sh teacher should be sound, should be good, should be free from defilements. Because there are a lot of spiritual teachers who are, you know, just there for the sake of it. They just claim to be completely pure and free from defilement, but which are they are not. Right? So Buddha is laying down some guidelines, which we can all take away from those guidelines. So, so okay, Buddha says that, now Buddha says, Buddha is sharing questions, like one Buddha question shares that, can anything corrupt be seen or heard in the realized one or not? Scrutinizing him, he, they find that nothing corrupt or seen, can be seen or heard, right? That's the, like, first. Then, can anything mixed be seen or heard in the realized one? They don't find anything. They scrutinize further. Can anything clean be seen or heard in the realized one? Yes, there is a something clean that can be seen or heard in the realized one. Right? So, Buddha is basically giving pointers which you can use. Did the venerable attain this skillful state a long time ago or just recently? That means, if the person has attained the state recently, it may be like, it's just the state, right? And the defilements can up, come up later. But did this, they attain this state for a long time? They have been, they have attained this state. That is again a pointer. Are certain dangers found in that venerable mendicant who has achieved fame and renown? Now, this is very important because Buddha very clearly says, mendicant, so long as a mendicant has not achieved fame and renown, certain dangers are not found in them. That is very, very important, friends. As long as, you know, a lot of, these sadhus and babas and you know as long as they do not achieve fame and recognition they do not have a very big audience then it is fine but the moment they get those following they got the audience and then they become corrupt right so the true test of a person as a spiritual teacher is when the person has a lot of audience lot of fame whether he still is able to maintain his his composure his depth right so that is again what buddha is asking the dangers are those do those dangers come when he has achieved the fame? They scrutinize further. Is this venerable securely stopped or insecurely stopped? Is the reason they don't indulge in sensual pleasures that they are free of greed because the greed has ended? B basically, Buddha is saying is that they do not indulge in the spiritual pleasures just because they want to portray themselves for a short time uh, that they are all clean and pure to gain followers, or is it that? That is being insecurely stopped or do are they doing some special sadhana or some special practices because of which their, uh, uh, their 
their indulgences are kind of uh, uh, restrained or is it that they have fully ended their defilements and they are absolutely pure so that is again the mendicant can check then then buddha is talking about that huh, then one more thing is that when the venerable is staying in a community or alone some group, people are in good state sorry state some instructor group some are seen amongst the pleasures of the fresh flesh while the others remain unsullied yet that venerable doesn't look down on them for that that means a buddha has all the various kinds of mendicants under him some at different levels of their development but buddha do not look down upon them that this is he is good he is bad right he he doesn't look that then buddha says that they should independently ask the mendic uh, the the buddha that can anything corrupt be seen in heard in you then can is there anything means so direct questioning now which master or which enlightened teacher would ensure will will enable you know will ask the students to directly question him he will take it as a personal insult but buddha was not like that he encouraged people to come to him directly and ask him those questions so that is also what buddha was saying then uh, then buddha said uh, once that uh, disciple is clear disciple ought to approach the teacher who has such a doctrine in order to listen to his teaching the teacher explains dhamma with its higher and higher stages with its better and better stages with its dark and bright stages when they directly know a certain certain principle in those teachings in accordance with how they were taught the mendicant comes to the conclusion about the teachings they have confidence in the teacher the blessed one is fully awake in buddha the teaching is well explained the sangha is practicing well when someone's faith is settled rooted and planted in the realized one in this manner with the words and phrases it is said to be grounded faith that's based on evidence it is firm no that that means it's not based just on blind faith it's based on evidence that means the 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 student has first checked whether the master is not you know, having any defilements his conduct how he speaks right he like does a background kind of a verification that you know what what he does how how far back he has been enlightened all these things he says then he studies the teachings that whether the teachings are has higher in its higher stages dark and bright sides all those things and once then he gets that experiential faith and confidence that this is a fully realized buddha right and it's firm and it cannot be shifted by any ascetic because once that faith is there then that faith cannot be shifted by so buddha says it cannot be shifted by any ascetic brahman god mara brahma or anyone in the world this is how to scrutinize the realized one's qualities but the realized one has already been properly searched in this way by nature this is what buddha said satisfy the mendicants approved of what the buddha said so friends here what is important is that we have to over time when we are in the teaching see now buddha is no longer there in the physical form but the buddha is there when we are mindful right when we practice the dhamma so buddha is there with us so when we study the buddha's teachings we they see one thing is that we keep on learning more about his life like for example these videos that i am doing you can you know re- check out these videos or see read the discourses or there are certain books which you can like uh, old path white clouds or many other books are there on buddha's life study the study his life and somewhere you will get that confidence about buddha as a teacher right for me you know what happened was when i read this book um the buddha said by osho this that book you know was like it is a that just struck something in me about you know buddha and his teachings and i wanted to just dedicate my life to spreading buddha's teachings right it's it was just that confidence in buddha that i got from 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 that book and when and when i read the discourses so friends what is important is that we get the confidence experiential confidence in the teacher if we don't have that experiential confidence then anyone else can kind of you know stray us from the path and this is what i have observed in in buddha's teachings there are many many people due to their vested interests who stray people away from buddha's path why and especially this happens in india because buddha directly attacked the caste system the animal sacrifices 
and the wrong practices that were prevalent in the Vedas. Buddha totally attacked the Vedas, claiming them to be wrong, and he attacked the the Brahmanical caste, the people who were you know very powerful and oppressing the uh, poor people. So and then Buddha attacked the central idea of the Vedas that there is a permanent self, and Buddha said that there is nothing like a permanent self. So what those people felt, you know, because they their you know the the their businesses or spiritual you know businesses uh, that they had made out of you know religion and everything that were getting impacted, they started spreading the misinformation about the Buddha, and and. You know, the, those people, they keep on spreading the misinformation. That's why in India, very, very few people practice the real Buddha's teachings. And that is why, why my aim is that Buddha's teachings, which are lost due to all this misinformation and, you know, these things, they, they come back. But what important thing is that if we have a firm confidence in the Buddha, then we will not be strayed by anyone who says anything else. Like there is this thing about in Vish Vishnu Puran that Buddha's knowledge is for Rakshasas. And Buddha wanted to sway, sway the Rakshasas away and that's why. So, see, the thing is, and then they made Buddha the ninth avatar of Vishnu. Right? All these things they, they did, all this drama that they did, just to, you know, sway people away from the Buddha's knowledge. So, let's not get swayed. Let's do proper inquiries. Let's test the teachings. Test the teachings. See where, whether it... It resonates, it strikes a chord, chord in you. And if it does, then don't listen to anyone else. Because this path that you have come in the Buddha's path is a very, very, uh, very, very, you know, we are very, very fortunate to be here on this path where there is a suffering and there is an end of suffering. And Dr. Buddha suggests a clear medicine, the Noble Eightfold Path. Let not, let's not get swayed. If you, if you want to develop the experiential confidence in the Buddha, Go understand the teachings, do the spade work. And second thing, that about the stream entry, about various stages of awakening. So first stage of awakening, you can check my video on the various stages of awakening. The first stage of awakening is Sotapanna, stream enter. And there is this thing that Buddha says that first stage you will reach, only those people reach who dedicate themselves only to Buddha as their teacher. Right. So if you Follow other teachers and other religions and other everything. Yes, do follow, right? But if you want to reach the first stage, the Sotapanna stage, like which is the first stage before realizing full Nibbana, you have to have a complete, absolute confidence in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. So for that, you have to build that confidence. And for building that confidence, you can study the Dhamma, practice the Dhamma, see if it strikes a chord and once you have that full form faith in the Buddha, then that's one of the conditions for achieving the Sotapanna. So that should be our first target as students of Buddha to be achieved in this life of that of being a Sotapanna. So I hope these insights helped you in some way. And I am also learning in my learning journey. Do share your insights and comments in the uh, comment section. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.